हेलो माय डियर फैमिली मेंबर्स आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग वेल फॉर योर अपकमिंग भर्तुसा एग्जाम और एनी अपकमिंग ऑफ कैंपस और ऑन कैंपस ड्राइव सो टुडे व्हाट आई हैव प्लान्ड एज आई हैव गॉट इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम यू गाइस यू हैव एग्जाम ऑफ भर्तुसा विद इन वेरी फ्यू डेज सो यू मस्ट नीड द टेक्निकल क्वेश्चंस एंड द कोडिंग क्वेश्चंस एंड आई नो देयर विल बी वेरी लेसर रिसोर्सेज अवेलेबल इन इंटरनेट सो प्लीज गिव इंपॉर्टेंस टू दिस वीडियो सो दैट यू कैन ग्रैब few important questions for your upcoming drive so let me show you the questions which were asked recently in bhartusa drive okay so let me share the technical mcqs at first so i'll show very few mcq questions and let me just uh show you which type of questions is being asked okay so uh, in which area of the class area uh, class are function and data directly accessible even outside from the class so this is very easy question but these type of questions are being asked in bartusa technical assessment for your mcq questions okay so private protected or public or none so i hope you know guys this answer is public okay so let me show you the next question what is the range of any 8 bit signed number 0 to 255 minus 20 minus 255 to 254 or minus 128 to 127 or 0 to 515. So I hope you have a very good guess. So the answer will be minus 128 to 127. Why? Because for 8 bit, uh, you have to take 7 bit for the magnet. I mean. Magnitudes and for one bit is for the positive and negative sign, right? So for seven, uh, if you just calculate two 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 divided by seven, then it will be lying between minus one twenty eight to one twenty seven. Okay. So I hope you understood. So let me go to the next question. So the next question is this: Determine the option which is a form of access and is commonly used in addition and removal of nodes from a dedicated queue. FIFO, LIFO, both or none. So it is obvious that if it is about the queue, and then the process will be FIFO. Okay, who will be entering first? He will be outing, like uh, removing first. Okay, and for LIFO, it will be stack, right? Okay, so actually these type of questions will be asked, uh, and these are all for like uh, to make you informed that these type of questions are being asked. Okay, and also please give importance to DSA related MCQ questions like uh, tree related, okay, sorting related, time complexity, time complexity, and in order traversal. uh post order traversal so this type of questions uh, important questions they will ask okay and also uh mm, 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 okay so actually this type of questions will be asked so please give importance to this type of questions actually and if you want to know what are the important mcq questions has been asked recently or in the latest drives or in the previous years and also what are the important coding questions so if you want to know all at once Then please visit topmed.io/techno_uf and just click on Bhartusa full materials. There we are providing you the mock test, free mock tests, and also providing all necessary things like all the technical MCQ questions, coding questions, and uh, interview experiences as well. So please visit that and grab the opportunity. Okay, so I hope you will do so. So let me go to the question. Yeah, so the coding question is this. You are given an array of integers input one, a string input two, and an integer input three. The string input two consists of characters p and n, where p represents a positive charge and n represents a negative charge. The integer input three denotes the length of the array and the string. Okay, your task is to calculate the total electrostatic force based on the following rules. The what are the rules for each element? In input one, if the corresponding character in the input two is p, add the element to the total sum. If the corresponding character in the input two is n, subtract the element from the total sum. Okay. Finally, return the absolute value of the total sum multiplied by hundred. Okay. So if I show you the sample input, it will be more easier to understand. That is this. If input one is equal to four three five, this is the array. Okay, and this is the input three is the size of the array, and P and P is the corresponding value 
of this array so for 4 it is positive for 3 it is negative for 5 it is positive okay so you have to add accordingly if 4 then you have to add 0 plus 4 if it is negative 3 it should be uh, subtracted and then p so it should be added okay so i hope you understood right so after just after doing the calculation if it becomes 6 then you have to at the end multiply it by 100 and return the output that is 600 okay sorry okay so the next thing is that how to solve this problem that is what we can do is uh, just run a while loop to go through all the element of the array okay of the array then here use a switch case to check if the corresponding uh, value of this input 2 is p or n if this is p then do something if this is n then do something okay so using while and switch we can do the solution so let me show you the solutions in python and java so let me show you python at first okay so this is the solutions so we are just printing this uh, so this means whatever it is returning okay so this function electrostatic taking three arguments one is the array input one and input two is the string and input three is the uh, size of that array okay and uh, so let me just go to the implementation of the function that is this so electrostatic taking three arguments and uh, we are running a for loop instead of while so we are running a for loop for i in range input three so input three means the size of the array okay and then we are getting the current value of of this string current value of the string that is if this is p of or if this is n or if this is p so we are storing that value p n or p in this character okay character variable then we are checking if ch is equal to is equal to p or not if it is is equal to is equal to p then we will add that total that was zero so we'll add that total with the first element corresponding element okay that is ith value that is the zero okay zeroth element of this input one okay and if this is uh, negative then we'll just subtract total is equal to total minus input one current value that is the i okay input one current value then at the end of the for loop we'll return absolute value of the total this total absolute value of the total if it is negative then also it will be uh, in positive then we have to multiply this by 100 and it should be returned okay so let me show you the sample like let me show you the let me run it as you can see 600 is the output and let me show you another sample input so if uh, let's say it is negative okay it is negative then what would happen so 0 minus 4 minus 3 so it becomes minus 7 then plus 5 it becomes minus 2 so absolute value of minus 2 will be 2 so 2 into 100 will be 200 right so as you can see the same is so 200 so i hope you understood so let me go to the java questions i mean java solutions so i hope you understood the uh, like syntaxes and logic right so this is the main function here we are just taking the array as an like hard coded inputs and then we are just printing whatever this function is returning okay so this array and this string and the size of the array so this will be static function so that we can call this directly from main function and it will return an integer value and this is the function name and it is taking three arguments okay so at the very beginning we are using a for loop to go through all the element of this array input one array this is okay and here we are storing the current value current character of this string we are storing current character so this character ch is equal to input 2 this is the input 2 dot caret so this is the inbuilt function which will return the current character okay i mean input 2 dot character at i that means the current value okay so it will return the current value of the current character of that string p or n or p okay so then we will check using a switch case switch ch will switch this ch and it will check if the case p if the case is p that means if this ch is equal to p then sum which was zero 
it will be added sum is equal to sum plus input 1 i input 1 i and it will break okay if this is okay then it will go to the next iteration okay and if it is equal to is equal to n then it will add uh, like subtract that number sum is equal to sum minus input 1 i okay and it will break the statement uh, break the uh, switch case okay and at the end of the for loop it will just return the absolute value into 100 i hope you understood so let me just run it and as you can see for this it should be 600 i mean the output should be 600 and as expected okay and for the next sample input that is p1p sorry pnp and nnp if it is nnp so it should return 200 right Mm, yes 200 that is the output i hope you understood so guys actually uh, the questions will be very much easy so just you have to know what type of questions are being asked okay what type of questions will be asked and what have asked what has been asked earlier okay if you know the pattern the like uh, the questions then it will be easier to crack the virtual section so i hope like you will do your best and thank you all for watching